So you want to run Lightburn on your K40? Okay, let's do it. Welcome back to another episode. And today, we make some changes to our old friend, the K40. Changes like Lightburn. So my K40, if you've been following along with it so far, um, I picked it up off of Facebook Marketplace a little while ago and uh, had to realign some mirrors. I had to get some new mirrors and uh, I've done a few things up to this point on it. Um, the most notably, uh, we added in a inline fan to go out the window. Um, we've added also an air pump for uh, air assist. Uh, and then um, in here, we I made a different bed for it um it wasn't the greatest but it worked better than what was in there to begin with but other than that it's pretty stock uh, i think the only other thing i did was i cut this little vent thing down here um it used to like stick out a couple inches further out here but i cut that back um so but you can see the controller and everything is all the stock stuff for now. And up to this point, if you've been following along, we've been running it off of a Raspberry Pi. So it's a standalone setup. So that's what we're gonna work on changing today. So we've been running K40 Whisperer on the Raspberry Pi uh, up to this point, and it's been fine. There's nothing wrong with it. it uh, it's done everything that I've wanted it to. Um, most of my projects, due to the size of the K40, are pretty limited. So uh, the K40 Whisper, it, it's done great. But I want to play with Lightburn more. I've had a Lightburn license for many years um, because I have a diode laser that I had hooked up to my, CO, my uh, CNC uh, downstairs. And uh, I just haven't really used Lightburn that much. And I want to with the K40. So let's look at our options. Up till now, the Cohesion 3D laser board has been the option of choice for trying to go uh, to use Lightburn on a K40 laser. Uh, and as you can see, while now it's price dropped from 265 to 229, uh, but uh, I, I've seen it over $300 before. So it's still for a machine that brand new costs like $400. I wouldn't want to spend half of that on just buying a new board. Granted, the Cohesion 3D board does more than just give you light burn, but that's that's still it's a costly spend. So what I did is I went ahead and ordered a board from Monport. So why would you want to go with the Monport board over the Cohesion 3D board? Uh, I'll give you two digits, a six and a zero. 60 bucks to do this. It was actually like 59 something, 59.95 or whatever it is. But basically, $60 to change it over instead of several hundred dollars. So, works for me. So, you may not know, but Monport actually sells a version of their K40 with this board already in it. So, you can run Lightburn right out of the box. Uh, pretty cool. But I know they, they just released that recently, so... Anybody that already has a K40 um, and has had one for a while, that doesn't really help you out very much. Except they do sell the board. So let's add it. Okay, let's uh, open this up and see what we got inside. So it's really packaged really well. And very protective and all that good stuff. So um, we got a box, a little baggie full of tools. That's pretty cool. A little screwdriver, a couple of Allen keys, uh, some extra screws of some sort, a wrench, uh, let's see here, we got uh, some extra cords, that's good, this is a USB-C USB cable, so that's nice, uh, and why do you need that, because this actually has a USB-C um, uh, port on it, let me put you down for a second. We'll open it up. Yeah, 
So here it is in all of its glory. Uh, and you'll notice that I did say USB-C. And that's because right there on the right-hand side is a USB-C port uh, to connect to your computer. Uh, it also does have a rocker switch for a um, on-off there. Uh, this is a reset switch here. Um, but uh, the ones that we're going to use do not have the blue little guys on them. Let's look at the wires that they sent you in that little bundle. Uh, this one here, it's got a single port here, and it splits off into two. These are going to be for your limit switches. Uh, this one here, uh, you can see it's got a single there, and then just pigtails on that side. That's going to be for your power. And this one here, you have a three uh, plug to a two plug, and that's going to be for your laser control. First things first, unplug it. Don't just leave it off. Just unplug the whole thing. Okay, let's look at our control board down here. So the stock one, uh, it's mounted to this white uh, piece of metal. There's a nut and a bolt down here on that corner. There's one here, and then there's one up here. Uh, as you can see, I took them out, and they're right there. Uh, so you're going to have to take all this out. And to do that, you can use the wrench that Montport threw into that uh, kit with it. It fits. While we're talking about the controller, um, you'll notice that I wrote down on here uh, the X and the Y axis. So I followed my motors over from the other side of the machine and uh, and marked them. Now we're just gonna go ahead and unplug the limit switches, uh, the power, and the motors, and uh, pull this whole thing out. Okay, to make my life easier, I went ahead and just hooked everything up to it before I put it into the case. So as you can see here, um, the one with the two and three prong, prong end, that goes here in the side. And then the power one uh, gets screwed into the terminals here with the supplied uh, uh, screwdriver. And then your limit switches are getting plugged in here. Okay, it's out on the table. I mean, literally took five seconds to unplug those things. Um, so something to take notice, here's the Monport board. Uh, your mounting holes for the Monport board are the same as the existing board here. So we're gonna unscrew this and then we're gonna use the same mounting holes um, with the screws that they provided in the kit and uh, remount it back in the same spot. Well, that wasn't expected. Um, so I was going to put this uh, plate on here and with the supplied screws and everything, and then I realized that they actually threaded the black piece. So, like, yeah, I thought I thought I was gonna have to like make threads through with these uh, little button head screws, um, but no, no, they already threaded them. So it just screwed right on there, real super easy, and I uh, used the supplied Allen wrench to tighten them down. So um, really nice, like, yeah, the the. It's impressed me so far, um, just with the installation on it, uh, that it everything looks like it's really well made, and that there's attention to details like threading the holes for the mounting screws. Um, that, that that was pretty pretty cool. I'm very impressed with that Monport. Good job. Okay, so I ran into my first little stumbling block. So you can look at this as far as then uh, when you're putting it in yours. So as you can see here, when I put it on here, um, I put it on with the side with the USB-C uh, port facing out like it would normally. Uh, and as you can see here, the board actually, uh, the mounting plate overhangs like a, uh, what's it, about half an inch or so, uh, something like that. So when I go to put it back in, it, it, it actually doesn't fit anymore. Um, and this is on mine, so you may run into this, you may not. Um, so what, uh, let me turn the camera out here. So this mounting point here on the side is hitting and it's about, you know, a quarter of an inch or so off, uh, for reaching. Um, so that's not going to work out. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take the board and flip it over, um, so that the USB-C side is over here and that should take care of it. And just to show you, um, it was supposed to go in this way. It's just the way that my box is constructed. There you go. You can see the USB-C port is right in the middle of that cutout. So it was supposed to go in this way. 
Uh, it's just that my box is wonky. Um, and even with the old one, with the old controller in here, uh, it was really tight in here. Like it was, it was off to some degree. So, uh, yeah, definitely my box concern. Not, this is not a Monport problem. This is definitely a Ryan has a, um, you know, off brand, uh, K40 here problem. So we're going to swoop it around. And like I said, all we're going to do is we're going to take this and just move it to that side and that should, uh, um, give us clearance that we need. Okay, well, it's back in there. Uh, it, it is very still snug, pretty snug over in here. Um, so if I were to do this and leave this in here, um, I, I would probably just take some like heavy duty double sided tape or something and just move it down, um, move it down over this way a little bit more and uh, just tape it on there and be done with it or drill holes, uh, a new set of holes further this way, like even an inch. Uh, over would be uh, real beneficial for that. Again, this is my cabinet's problem. It's not a Monport problem, but overall it, it's in there. It's just really snug on the, on the side. And I've probably already let it be known now that uh, stuff isn't going to be staying the way that it's looking right now. So we may be doing some other projects here with the K40 uh, immediately. It's in here for now. Uh, let's go ahead and get it wired up. Um, we're just going to have to unplug some stuff here from the uh, controller and plug new stuff in. Um, we're going to probably have to modify one item, uh, which is this, which is the, uh, the LED light strip that comes in from the other side. There it is right there. Um, it comes in and then it's these two wires right here on the power supply. So, um, we're going to have to figure out something to do with that. Uh, but the rest of it should just be plug and play. Plugged in our, um, our limit switches here. And then on the bottom there, which would probably be the top of yours, uh, is the X and Y motors. Um, they clipped right on in. And so all we have left is the power supply button one to put in and the laser firing one to put in. So over here on the, uh, um, on the power supply, we're going to unplug this guy, which for now is going to lose me the uh, LED light like we were talking about. Uh, and then we're going to unplug this one too, uh, which is on my is going to stop the uh, potentiometer from working. So, but all that's going to be handled now inside Lightburn. So, uh, um, you know, we'll just unplug those. They just take a little bit of wiggle. There's a little bit of hot glue on them. Uh, and uh, so you may have to just wiggle them a little bit and it'll pop out. Uh, you know it's the correct one. See this one here? This one activates the laser, turns it on. Uh, this is the test fire one here. Um, and this is the one that's going to your potentiometer and such like that. So we're going to unplug that. And it's the only one of these that has three prongs in it. That's how you know it's the right one to go into here. There we go, and that's what it looks like with them plugged in. Um, now with the uh, um, with the main plug here, uh, when you pull out your old one, you can kind of see how you can see the metal of the uh, of the connectors. Um, you just match it up the same way with this one. Um, I suppose you might be able to put it in the other way, uh, but don't uh, put it in this way. Uh, and also on the smaller one here, uh, you can only put that in one direction. So it's got the little uh, little tails on the one side, so you can't mess it up. Um, so that's it. That's everything's installed and it's ready to go, and ready to turn on. Um, now you'll see here. You know, right now I have some extra wires in here now, uh, but not worried about that. Like I said, we're gonna get in there and clean that stuff up, and uh, change some stuff around anyway. So um, let's uh, turn on light burn and. Go from there. Something to take note of while I'm thinking about it. Um, as you can see, this is my control board. I don't have the one that has the digital amp meter and stuff like that on it. Um, and so if you do, there that's going to become useless. You're, they won't work anymore. So uh, just uh, be aware of that, that you're going to have an extra wire at the end here. Almost forgot. Last thing you need to do is you need to change the uh, way that the um, end stops operate. So normally they are uh, normally closed, 
um, which is the outside one here, which is the common, and the normally closed uh, peg, which is at the bottom here. So you need to move that bottom one up to the center um, so that it's the opposite. Um, that one back there was a little bit more tricky to do. This one you, I did while it was still mounted here. Um, I just used a soldering iron, heated it up a little bit, pulled it away, added some solder to that uh, post, and then put it back on there. Uh, but the one back here couldn't do that on. Uh, I used one of the uh, Allen keys that it came with, and you could unscrew it. Uh, there was also a zip tie back here in the corner uh, for that wiring. Had to clip that off of there, and uh, and then do the same thing and put it back in there. Um, you know, took a couple minutes, no big deal. So uh, now it, we should all be ready to go. Um, oh, and to get to that back one, it's easier if you have the lid off because it just gives you more hand room, especially when you have big mitts like I do. All right, let's turn this thing on and get it fired up. Okay, so here we are in Lightburn, um, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, make sure that our laser is in Lightburn first. Um, it, it automatically saw uh, this board for me when I hooked up. So, but if it doesn't, down here where it says devices, if you click on that, it'll pop up. See, there's, that's my laser right there. Um, and if it, so if there's nothing uh, populated there, you're gonna go here to this find my laser. It's gonna say, you know, make sure you're plugged in and you're gonna hit next. And then uh, it should pop up your, your laser. It doesn't pop up anything there for me. Don't know why, uh, but uh, you know it's already in there, so it doesn't matter. Um, all right, so we're gonna cancel that. There we go. And uh, we're just gonna make a simple little box here. Uh, and uh, I just made it a line um, with 10 millimeters a second power at 80%. Uh, it's just a piece of cardboard. It's gonna blow through that. It doesn't matter. Um, if we uh, hit start, you can hear the machine going, and it's uh, firing away here. Yeah, that's way too hot for a piece of cardboard. And there it is, you can see it even dropped out of there. So, success! Um, awesome! Great! Well, so there we go. Light burn on a K40. Pretty simple. Uh, the most difficult part was probably the limit switches. So here are the directions for the uh, uh, Monport board on the laser. Uh, it, it's a very brief manual. Uh, pictures are really good. Uh, but besides that, it really isn't useful. But the pictures are really good, and that is useful. Um, but it tells you what all the plugs are and everything like that. Uh, shows you where... Uh, stuff is going to be connected to so your 24 volt power supply, your limit switches, your stepper motors, the laser control, the USB C, and then uh, you know it says uh, uh, remove the old one and put the new one in is what it says. Uh, connect power supply to control board. Connect the machine to PC with USB cable, and then software configuration. So there's really not any directions to be set in there. Um, like what we've gone through uh, but uh, like I said the pictures are good and the pictures are worth having around when you're doing this so uh, I recommend pulling it up I'll put a link in the description uh, for that uh, for the description so, uh, K40 light burn worth it it definitely will be uh, it, it wasn't much trouble and it's not much of cost uh, like I probably said before not sponsored just bought it myself and uh, um, so I tell you if it was crap and it's not it, it, it works it was really easy to plug in the attention to detail on the board is really nice um, you know plugging everything in had its own little home you could figure it out really easily um, it, it wasn't bad at all so uh, like I said the worst part was probably the limit switches you know just having to resolder stuff uh, but even that, I mean, it only took it, it took me longer to find my soldering iron than it did anything else. So, uh, if you don't have a soldering iron, um, these uh, limit switches had little holes in them. You probably could just twist the wire in there or something. But I wouldn't leave it like that. 
uh, I would definitely solder them. And uh, I'm good to go. All right, well, I have no voice, so hope you're having a great day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.